welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a basic Taekwondo drill for someone who has never done Taekwondo before. Today we are going to start by going over a few basic stances and then we're going to move into a few basic kicks that you can learn. Uh, to get started, we're not going to be going over any of the uh, formal commands or um, more of the kumse aspect of things that you would typically work on. Today we're just going to focus on some kicks and stances that you would use um, typically in a sparring type of situation, uh, which would be very similar to what you saw at the Olympics if you watched the, the past couple of weeks. So with that stated, let's get started. The first stance that we're going to learn is called a natural stance or a fighting stance. This is going to be the stance that you're going to use most of the time. How you'll find the stance is you'll bring your feet together, uh, turn one foot out, 45 degrees, take one, two, and a half steps forward, and turn your foot about 45 degrees, so that both feet are facing about 45 degrees from straight ahead of you, uh, and your feet are parallel to each other. Okay, from there, you're going to take your knees, and you're going to give a slight bend in your knees. Okay, you want to lift the heels off ever so slightly, and rebalance them. From the side, it looks something like this. Note that my torso, when I face towards you, I have my torso almost completely turned away from you, so I'm facing towards this wall over here. This is important, because in Taekwondo, if you have your body very square like this, like a boxer would, you're very likely to get hit very hard in the stomach or the abdomen, and uh, it can hurt quite a bit. Uh, there are a lot of kicks, like a back kick or a side kick that are going to hit very hard. So if you turn to the side, you become much narrower, it's much harder to hit there. Okay? It also makes it easier for you to turn your hips over more on your kicks and get more power. So we're going to work on that natural stance now. You want to find it, feet together, turn about 45 again, one, two and a half, and then bounce. See what feels good, then try it on the other side. Turn it out, one, two, and a half, 45, and bounce, okay? You should be able to switch back and forth. Okay, so that's gonna be our first show that we're gonna try now. Uh, if you need a moment, go ahead and pause the video, find your natural stance, find, what, find what's comfortable. Everybody's natural stance is a little bit different. For me, my natural stance tends to be about here. I've seen some people who are more like this. I've seen some people who are like this. Different stance widths have different advantages and disadvantages. A really narrow stance tends to be very fast. You can react, move forward and back very quickly. But a stance that's very narrow, while fast, doesn't give you a lot of range. It's hard to cover a lot of ground from a very narrow stance. Whereas if I have a wide stance, I'm slower trying to move back and forth or to the side. But when I want to cover lots of ground, it's easy to get lots of momentum and really cover a lot of ground, ground to, reach, to reach an opponent. So I like to find a stance somewhere in the middle. Everybody's stance will vary a little bit. I recommend two and a half foot lengths though because it's a nice kind of neutral in between to start from. And then once you proceed and do Taekwondo for longer, get used to sparring, You'll experiment, you'll try a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, and you'll find what works best for you. I think you should always be playing with your stance. Uh, to this day, I'm a second on. I'm constantly trying new stances, new widths, because sometimes things will work a little bit better. Uh, trying something new, you might learn something about the way that you move and the way that you kick. Also, the right stance isn't always the same against every opponent. So. Find your stance, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, now that you've found your stance, we're gonna move on to a little bit of a footwork drill. Okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be in your nice natural stance uh, with your back leg, uh, or your right leg to the back to start. I'm gonna be moving this way, so I'm facing that way. Uh, if I were gonna do this drill towards you, I'd be facing like this, okay? My right leg is back, and I'm going to do it's called a chunjin step. I'm going to bring my right leg forward 
and it kind of knocks my left leg out of the way, like this. Okay? It's a way of moving forward, it's covering ground. Now I can turn around, I make sure that I shift my back leg a little bit. Uh, we'll go over that. Slide forward. The back leg should move before the front leg. So if I do it in slow motion, it looks like that. The hip shifts and then comes the step. Okay? One thing that I forgot to mention earlier when we talked about your stance is that it's important that your back foot here is a little bit further out than your front foot. It's going to become really important when we do kicks, but it'll also be important in the next footwork drill. Um, the reason for that is you need space for this back knee to be able to come through. So make sure you start on that early. Start right now, because if you wait until you've been doing this for a long time and you drill in bad habits, it's just like any other sport. It's going to be much harder to fix them later. So fix it right now. Okay? So what you're going to do for this drill, chunjin, bounce. Settle yourself. Chunjin. Okay? You want to do this at least 10 times going forward. Ideally, you're going to want to cover like a full length of a room, um, maybe 50 feet. I guess that, you know, that's typical Taekwondo school length. Um, a bit bigger than your typical room, but you can do this outside or inside. Either one is fine. I recommend don't do this on carpet surface, however, because you will probably tear up your feet. I do recommend doing it barefoot. Don't practice in socks. You will regret that. You will probably fall. Okay, so go at least 10 forward, and then turn around. What I don't want you to do, however, is I don't want you to go one, two, three. You'll find that your footwork starts to fall apart, and your footwork is really important. Your footwork is what sets you up to be able to score your kicks against an opponent, puts you in the right position, and it defends you. If you're not where your opponent needs you to be, it's hard for them to ever kick you in an effective manner. Okay? 10 down, switch sides, 10 back. Do that drill two or three times until you start to feel comfortable. Once you're done with that, come back and we'll move on to the next drill. Okay, now we're going to move into Ilgo Chunjin. Sorry, I did say we weren't going to use any of the formal names. It's the only name that I know this by, however, so we're going to use it. This is essentially a step forward. Okay. Whereas the other one, I slid in, knocked it out of the way. This one, I drive with the knee and step through. Okay, towards you. It's important that I don't bring my foot wide and around like this. I want to come straight through and I turn the hip over. It's just like I was going to throw a kick, but I don't, I just step. This is called a chun, or ilgo chunjin. You can do this one just moving straight down. Okay, and then turn around. Nice and easy. Again, go down and back. Um, try and do that two or three times again so that you start to feel comfortable with the movement. Try and make sure that as you go through each of these drills, your, excuse me, your stance stays the same width. A common mistake that beginners will have is they'll start at this width, about two and a half foot lengths apart for their feet. And then they'll step through and they end here, only about one and a half, one foot length apart. That's not so good because if you do it again and you shrink more, and again and you shrink more, now your feet are right on top of each other. It's a little bit of an exaggerated example, but it will happen. Another thing that will tend to happen is people's feet they don't step through, uh, I'll do it towards you, they don't step through straight so that I maintain the same distance this way between my feet. Instead, they step kind of like this, so that they're getting wider and wider. You see how my legs are kind of starting to spread apart. That'll make it hard for you to continue to move and if an opponent comes in or uh, attacks towards you or something of that nature, it's gonna be hard for you to react if you've got this weird wide stance. Okay? So try and make sure that your foot placement stays constant, just like we practiced when we just found our natural stance. You want to make sure your feet always return to that position in every step, um, shuffle, 
or uh, switch that you do. Okay? So go ahead and give that a try. Okay, now that you've done that, we're going to do what I was just doing. We're going to do a switch. So you're in your natural stance, and you just switch your feet. It's kind of like a jump, but I don't want to jump up and land. Okay, that's slow. If I jump up all that time I'm in the air, I am defenseless. If somebody wants to kick me, there's nothing I can really do about it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and stay as low as possible. My feet are only going to get maybe an inch, a millimeter off the ground. And I switch my feet. I turn my hips quickly across. From here, that's the idea. Okay? Go ahead and try that about 10 times. It's pretty simple, but it can be useful because if an opponent, say, always likes to kick with their back right leg and they like to kick you in the stomach well if you know that and kind of work that out then you can switch your feet and now you're giving them your back instead they might not like to kick that target as much they might not be as familiar and it puts pressure on them it makes them think okay go ahead and give that a try switch stances 10 times okay now that you've worked on your uh, basic natural stance and a few footwork drills to go with it. We're now gonna move in to a few basic kicks that you can do uh, in Taekwondo, okay? So we're gonna start in that natural stance again. Okay? I'll show you this from both sides, both facing this way, facing this way, and I'll do it towards the camera, okay? We're gonna start with a basic back leg roundhouse kick. So the basic back leg roundhouse kick begins from a natural stance, you pivot the front foot so the face is basically straight forward. You lift up your knee. Your knee needs to be at least at your waist height. The higher you lift the knee, the higher your kick is going to ultimately go. Then you're going to turn your knee over. And when I do this, my plant foot, my left leg here, is going to turn and face straight away from the camera. Okay? I want to have my lifted leg, knee, pointing straight at my target. I want my foot tucked in as close as I can to my butt. This is gonna allow me to get as much power as possible and make my kick as fast as possible. From there, I turn a little bit more on my plant foot, extend, and then pull back, step down. A little bit faster. And at full speed, it looks something like this. Now I'll do it with my back to the camera. I'll do it towards the camera. When you strike, you want to make sure that your foot is all the way turned over. We call it turning over the hip. The power in this kick comes from this turn over of your hip, where my hip is facing basically that way right now. I want to turn it like this, and that's where the power of this kick comes. It's from the hips, not really from the leg muscles as much. The last second, I snap out and pull back. It's important to pull back and put your foot back down on the ground because otherwise, the whole time that I'm just kind of up here like this, I'm defenseless and I'm just waiting for my opponent to kick me. Go ahead and give it a try yourself. I recommend trying it about 10 to 15 times on each leg before switching to the other leg. Two to three repetitions of this would be a good start. Right now, you're going to aim for about the midsection or the stomach abdominal region. That is ideally where you're going to strike with this kick. As you get better, you can drive the knee higher and go for the head instead of the body. In Taekwondo, the striking surface that you want to use on a roundhouse kick is the top of your foot, kind of where the laces of your shoe would go. You want to strike with this part of your foot 
against the body in a short slapping type motion. You do not want to use your toes. If you curl your toes back, kind of like if you were wearing high heels, um, you're likely to jam a toe and break your foot. Also in Olympic Taekwondo competition, striking with that part of the foot on a roundhouse kick will not score. Only striking with the top of the foot will score for a roundhouse kick. So that is what we are gonna work on for today. Okay, go ahead and give that a try. Okay, now we're gonna move on to a front kick. The front kick starts very similar to the roundhouse kick. Starts in a natural stance, starts with a knee lift up, but then instead of turning our hips over, we just snap it out, pull it back, and put it down. The front kick, unlike the roundhouse kick, does not hit with the top of the foot where the laces are. This kick, you want to pull your toes back and you want to strike with the ball of your foot. Okay? This is a hard surface that you should be able to strike like so. When you throw kicks, make sure you try and keep your hands in. Don't flail up. It makes it hard to control yourself, hard to balance. And if you were going to throw two kicks in a row, it's going to be very hard to do that successfully if your hands are thrown all over the place. You're going to lose your balance and it's going to be much harder to continue. This becomes increasingly important as you go from one kick to two kicks to three kicks to ten kicks that you're going to do in a row like one, two, three, etc. Okay? Front kick, again, should start by aiming for the uh, center of mass, particularly like right on your diaphragm. If you trace, take your finger, kind of tap on your sternum right on the hard chest bone, and keep going down until you find the squishy bit where it hurts to tap like this, that's where you want to aim your front kick for, for a middle section front kick. As you get more advanced, you'll move to a high section front kick, and for that you want to aim right here, right between the tip of your nose and the top middle part of your top lip, right there. That's going to be your target as you get more advanced and move to a high section kick. When doing a front kick, you should always aim for one of those two places. Don't aim for somewhere in between. One is a middle section, one is a high section. Go ahead and give that a try. Try about 10 on each side. Be careful with these kicks, especially if you're not that um, experienced or that flexible. Don't push yourself too hard on it. It's okay to have your front kick only come to about your waist height or even a little bit below that. As you do these more and more, you'll find yourself get more flexible and be able to reach higher. Okay? I hope that you've enjoyed today's beginner Taekwondo lesson. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to answer your questions to the best of my ability. If you've enjoyed this, I hope that you look into pursuing Taekwondo further. If you like this style in particular, if you like the things that I was working on, I recommend seeking out a WTF school that stands for World Taekwondo Federation. Those schools are governed by an organization called the World Taekwondo Federation, or WTF, that oversees Olympic style sparring, Taekwondo, uh, not just sparring, Olympic style Taekwondo. They have uh, requirements for belt testing, sparring, um, the kicks, how they be performed, all of those things. They certify instructors. Um, so there's a good chance that if they're W2F school, they're going to be a quality school. Some schools are not as good as others, but generally speaking, it's a good thing to look for. Um, nothing wrong with other styles, but if you liked what you saw at the Olympics or um, are curious what I do, WTF is the style that I do. It's governed by the Kukiwan, is another name for it. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments. Uh, feel free, go through this several times. These are not even close to all of the things that you'll learn just in your first three months in a Taekwondo class. But they are some of the basic fundamentals that are used for most of Taekwondo. The roundhouse kick scores more than any other kick in all of Taekwondo. The front kick is not used in sparring any longer. 
but it is the most important kick in Kunse competition. Both are fundamental uh, core principles of Taekwondo. The footwork that we worked on today is the basis of all sparring that takes place in WTF Taekwondo and is very important in a lot of other martial arts as well. The ability to move and maintain a stance, although the stances may vary, is critical across boxing, Taekwondo, Muay Thai, Karate, everything you need, particularly in the stand-up arts, everything needs that solid footwork where you don't have to think about your footwork, you can just move and always end up where you need to be is a core principle that's common to all martial arts that at least I've ever been a part of. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that you perhaps found this somewhat relaxing, although I think this is a little bit unusual for an ASMR channel. So with that, I hope you have a good night.